Holly, hello, and welcome to Confessions of a Refashionista. I'm Refashionista Sherry, and I am here to show you how to live affordably, sustainably, because why? Being eco-friendly shouldn't cost the earth. <laughs> So, if you've been here for a while, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you kind of love upcycling tutorials, refashions, and sustainable lifestyle tips and tricks, then go ahead and subscribe and throw a like. And of course, hit that notification bell so you know when I post a new video, which does happen every week, by the way. <laughs> now, today, I thought we would do something a little bit different though. I have recently been going through my channel and my blog and my site and giving everything a kind of refresh and redesign, which means I've been kind of redoing all of my video thumbnails. Now, I, as I've been doing this, have also been watching some of these videos and it is so amazing to me how much, you know, I have grown and learned and, you know, from when I first started, it is just no comparison in, of course, the video quality. And it's not just down to the technology, of course, getting better. But I mean, I kind of study up and I really try to, to learn so I can give you guys kind of the best experience, I guess. <laughs> now, I thought it would be kind of funny to revisit and react. Isn't that what all the cool kids are doing nowadays? Reaction videos. So, so let's do a reaction video to my first ever YouTube channel video. And I do have a bit of a backstory on this, which is kind of funny. So, I mean, come on, let's just dive right in. <laughs> This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So even though I had my YouTube account since 2011, I didn't actually create or post anything. I never thought I would, to be totally honest. But the first video I did post was on February 2nd, 2013. And the reason I did that really is it has nothing to do with actually wanting a YouTube channel. <laughs> I had at that point had my blog for about just over a year and a lot of the stuff that I was sharing tutorials for I was actually selling online. I had my my little side hustle and I was living in Berlin, Germany at this time and the platform that I sold on was called Dawanda and they were kind of like the pardon me Mr. Jack has to tick tack all over his his comfy bedroom. So, ready? Can I continue? Okay. So Dawanda was like the Etsy of Europe and it was actually based out of Berlin, Germany. And because I had actually been featured on their blog more than a few times and they were really all about upcycling, refashioning, reusing, they actually reached out to me and said, hey, we would love to work with you. We are starting a YouTube channel and would you be interested in possibly hosting the English version of their YouTube channel. So there was going to be a German version and an English version. And I was like, hey, cool, that sounds pretty awesome. And I went to the first meeting and it was it was a little bit odd um, because uh, Germans are not known for being gregarious or having large, hilarious senses of humor, although some of them do. Absolutely, you know, I lived there for nearly a decade. And so, so yeah, they, they do, they totally do. I'm just, just saying sometimes stereotypes are accurate. And in this case, the stereotype was accurate. The woman or women that I was speaking to were 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 fine, but they 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 weren't really the most friendly or funny or in my humble little opinion, I personally didn't really think they knew how to 
how to do a YouTube channel or how to kind of be a host or anything like that. So during this meeting, they had basically just said to me, okay, look, we think you're really great. And we would like you to make us a sample video, if you would be so kind, to show us a very, very, very simple tutorial. And then we will go from there. So I was like, okay, cool. And they showed me the video the, of the German side of this little production. And it was, it wasn't anything that I actually would have found fun to watch. It was basically just the woman was sitting behind a white table. She had her, her crafty ingredients in front of her and then just basically was straight to the camera very monotone saying exactly how this was made and then we need to take this and then we need to take this and we need to put this in here and it just was not um not something that i personally would find interesting or engaging to watch and so i in the nicest way possible and in my best german i <laughs> i said that to them that oh maybe you know they need to be a little bit more um happy, smiling, and more engaging with the audience. And they basically told me, no, we don't want that at all. We want you to be not, not as happy as you appear right now. And like, as I am right now on my channel, this is like how I am all the time, <laughs> you know, unless I'm in a crappy mood, this is, this is me. I'm, I am not putting on a show here on my channel. This is my personality. This is who I am. <laughs> so, so that was very difficult for it. I was trying to think, okay, how can I be less happy? Like, what, what do they want me to do? <laughs> so, so I went home, I figured out a tutorial and everything. And the first video I did sent over to them and they said, no, 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 you are too energetic. You are way too happy. Can you please do it again? And again, I wanted this job. I thought it was going to be pretty cool to, you know, to be kind of the host of a, of a show on YouTube way back in 2013. And, um, yeah. So, so I did another one and they said, unfortunately it is still <laughs> too happy. So they were going to go with someone else. Now, um, the person they did end up going with was very, very, I don't know how to say this without sounding kind of <laughs> not, not kind, but the person they went with was very monotone and suffice to say there, the channel doesn't, isn't there. It never, it never went, it never happened, <laughs> right? Because again, you're not going to get views. You're not going to get anyone interested if you're not going if you're not being engaging in your, you know, in your videos and you're not showing things that are of interest to people. So, so instead of allowing all of that work I did to go to waste, I thought, you know what? I have this video now. So why not, why not make my channel. I have my account that I was just using for watching videos, right? So why not upload it and see what happens? And um, yeah, so let's, let's actually watch the video now. <laughs> and this is the one that I actually had to redo it because I was too happy. And um, you will absolutely see a difference from this first video <laughs> to now. So I just want to preface by saying that I did have a kind of brief, so a description, and I was supposed to look like a typical housewife, whatever the heck that means. I mean, I was still breastfeeding my new-ish baby daughter at this time, so I think whatever, I guess I fit, I fit the look, um, and I did try to do my hair nice. I don't know. It was 2013, guys. And so, yeah, so I think, I think I fit their brief, what they wanted. Uh, and again, I was supposed to not be so happy like I am in real life. So I have my tablet here set up on a nice little, little stand and you'll have to pardon. The sun keeps coming in and out here. So 
Sometimes this is gonna be super bright and sometimes it's not, but it is what it is. Let's watch the video though. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Sherry from AwesomeSauceAsHattery.com and welcome to Confessions of a Refashionista, the webisode. Okay, 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 I have to stop it because what am I doing? Like, <laughs> first of all, what hair? What hair was that? What, what was I thinking? Second of all, the webisodes. I mean, Okay, I guess I, I was trying. I really, you know, I was trying to fit their fit their brief and fit what they wanted and everything. And um, just let me grab going to my little bookshelf here. My book <laughs> that I wrote, produced everything, and paid for the publishing of. This was my my first book, and I like it's you know my little baby, so so of course I had to hold it out. Um, yeah, and I mean, and again, like the titles and everything, I, I did the best that I could to create all the, I don't know, everything, but sorry, I, I shall try not to interrupt <laughs> too much. Every Monday, I'll be sharing my adventures in upcycling with step-by-step -step tutorials featuring everything from accessory and clothing refashions to thrift delicious home decor. So why don't we get started right away with a little something for Valentine's Day I like to call... Uh, okay, this is, this is really interesting. So you can see on my, on my hand there, it is literally this... Pardon my my Jackie boy to be tapping around here. It is literally this. It is this bracelet. And uh, I mean, come on, that's proof that my my tutorials do stand the test of time. <laughs> and speaking of tutorials, I will of course be linking this down below so you can make your own upcycled denim and floral bracelet and ring set. But also, so this, this little tiny corner, this was like my office in, in our little apartment in Berlin. And just beyond that curtain that you can see there in the frame, which that fabric is actually now on my, on my desk chair. Um, so I'll, yeah, I'll put the tutorial for that down below as well. It started out as a curtain, <laughs> but beyond that curtain was my daughter's crib. <laughs> so, so it was a very teeny weeny tiny space that I was working with and I actually still have the camera <laughs> that I used which by today's standards by 21 or 21 2021 <laughs> standards this is this is not a good camera <laughs> I mean phone cameras are loads better than this was but but yeah you can kind of see the difference in technology and quality of, of my videos has drastically improved over the last years here so let's continue close pin sweethearts they're kissing for this adorable project you will need a plain wooden clothes pin a sharp pencil, and a variety of marker colors. So to begin, grab your pencil, grab your clothespin, and simply mark out where you would like the clothes to be. So there's a couple necklines, give my little dude here a belt and a shoe line. And for myself, a skirt and knee-high boots, I think. Should you wish, you can go all the way around with your lines and have 3D color all over your clothespin. And the next part, just simply color away. So let's start with a nice green shirt to match my husband's green eyes. Lovely. This is not necessary to show all of this, even if it's sped up, it's, it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> For the features, I really recommend using a small tipped pen and simply draw on the distinguishing facial features. 
in my case, my husband's glasses, and to give myself a nice little eye. There we are. All done. Okay. If you're not pressed for time, you can also use some acrylic paints to give your clothespin a more finished look. And there you have it, an adorable little last minute Valentine's gift. So until next time, I'll catch you on the zigzag. So, you can see I have kept some things like my little outro catchphrase, catch you on the zigzag, which if you don't know where that comes from, if you haven't listened to any of my interviews or podcasts or anything, that is from when I inherited my very, very first vintage sewing machine, which started this whole journey for me, was inheriting this machine. The great aunt that I got it from was trying to explain how to use it. And at that time, my German wasn't fantastic and she didn't speak any English whatsoever. So she basically was just yelling at me all the time, zigzag, zigzag, in German, zigzag is zigzag, and trying to tell me that if you want to finish your kind of seams nicely, because this was an old machine, it was not a serger or anything, that I needed to use the zigzag stitch. <laughs> so, so that's where that comes from, was this this first little sewing tip that I got from Great Aunt Inga about using the zigzag stitches. <laughs> Anywho, as you can also see, I used to used to think it was cool, I guess, to um, put a little a little thing at the end saying saying what my outfit was. And in my mind, I was trying to be kind of like on the talk shows, <laughs> like how they say where their clothes are from. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's hilarious fun to go back and look at my old videos. And again, they're, they might not be the best quality, but they're still useful. You know, they are still teaching you things. So if you haven't kind of binged my videos, do it. It is really, really funny. And it's, it's also so fun to you can really see how my skills have improved, which again is more proof that just keep at it, just keep doing, and you will get amazingly better with time. That is just with everything, right? But the best part is with refashioning and upcycling, it is actually loads of fun to do. And on that note, if you would love more rockin' refashionista tutorials and pre-love style inspiration plus sustainable lifestyle tips and tricks, head on over to my refashionistasherry.com and everything is over there. Plus, I am like this close to launching my e-course and it is so exciting and I have spent a really long time working on this, so I really hope that you guys are going to love it. And it's got, I mean, everything is in this. I have filmed so many videos and it just, from start to finish, it is every single thing you need to know to upcycle, recreate, refashion, thrift, and just whatever to create your own unique, sustainable style on a very tight budget. So please do keep an eye out for that. It is coming very, very soon, and it's very, very exciting. And um, yeah, until next time, <laughs> stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag. <laughs>